the difference quotient, the basics and beyond. All right, so the difference quotient, and this is true when h is not equal to zero, right? It's in the denominator, it can't be zero. f of x plus h, right? You're evaluating the function f at x plus h, minus f of x, all divided by h. I've seen this, by the way, here instead of h has been delta x. That's a, the Greek letter delta, so that's delta x, and this is delta x. All right, so however you want to say that, but h is, is what I'm choosing to use here, all right? You know, you can be some other variable. It doesn't have to be h or delta x. All right, step one, find and simplify f of x plus h. So what I do, I take this, I take this, and I make this my step one, okay? So then I make that my step one, and then find and simplify negative f of x. So I take this, which by the way, if you're given f of x, negative f of x is just changing all the signs, okay? So literally just changing all the signs. Let's look at the next step. The next step is to combine steps one and two, to simplify them and then factor them. So the, basically this entire numerator is step three. So I found step one here, step two here, and then I just combine the two of them. So I'm, I'm literally going to write it in blue and then gray and then simplify it in green, Okay. And then my final step is to divide by H and simplify. H must divide out, all right? That's because in algebra, we just say H can't be zero. But if you go to pre-calculus or you go into calculus, whether it be business calculus or regular calculus, um, you go into that and, and you're going to use this. This is the crux, the basis of something called the derivative. Okay, that's all what Cal 1, the first semester of calculus, is all about. And it's, you know, from something called a limit. And so you let the limit... You let that H go to zero. It can't be zero, but you let it go to zero. Well, if you got H still left over in the denominator, it can't go to zero, can it? That doesn't work. So um, just keep that in mind as we work through these. But again, the reason this is in college algebra, you know, if you don't go any further, you always wonder, why is that there? It's because it's so fundamental in what comes next in math. So for an engineer, for a scientist, for a mathematician, for somebody that uses high-level math, um, even met a doctor once who created a heart valve, and he used uh, calculus in his uh, um, invention, so to speak. Uh, so um, whoever you are, whatever you do, if you use high-level math, you use calculus, this is so uh, such a big deal for that. All right, so let's look here. Find and simplify. So for me, I'm going to have these steps written up here right now on some of these. I, may, I don't remember. I may have them on all of them. I will, you know, if you take my test, obviously that won't be there. You'll have to know the steps, how to break it down. You don't have to break it up this way. Many of you were taught, hey, just do the whole thing at once, and that's fine if you can keep up with that. I think that's sometimes confusing, so I like to break it up in steps. The blue step is sometimes really quick and sometimes not really quick, Okay. So, and that's part of the reason I do this is because on this particular problem, doing it all at once is really easy. On the next one, it's a lot more complicated. So let's look at this. Um, step one, f of x plus h, that's going to be 9 times x plus h plus 26, right? Right, so this goes in for x right there and then down here, right? So I'm going to take this and say, okay, distribute to 9. This is going to be 9x plus 9h plus 29. Do I have any like terms there? Nope. So guess what I can do to that? Nothing else. That's it. I can't do anything. Step one is done. Step one, that was a really simple step one compared to how step ones go. All right. So here, negative f of x literally means negative and then your function, which is 9x plus 26. Distribute to negative and you get minus 9x minus 26. And you can't do anything else with that. Step three is literally, literally... This gets plugged in for this, and this gets plugged in for this, okay? So I'm going to say 9x plus 9h plus 29, and then minus f of x. I don't need to worry about this minus sign. I already took care of the minus sign right here, right? So I just copy this down right here, minus 9x minus 26. I literally string together this answer and this answer Right here. That's all I do. I'm just literally stringing those together. And then I'm going to simplify it in the green here. So 9x minus 9x cancels. There's nothing to go with the 9h. Plus 20. I wrote that wrong, didn't I? I wrote that wrong. Let me fix it. Sorry. Let me fix that. Some of y'all been screaming at the some of y'all been screaming at the screen for so long right now. And I haven't heard you. 
So let me fix that. I'm sorry. My apologies. Let's fix that. See again. Copy something wrong. Done it before. I'll do it again. I'm human. Just make sure we catch it. 26 goes here, right? That should be 26. So now that we have that correct, plus 26 and minus 26 is going to cancel, right? So the way you remember that is at step three, at step three, everything should have an H in it unless you have a fraction or a radical. And, and don't worry, I'll do some of those. That's the end beyond part. Uh, they're a little bit more intense uh, or can be. So 9H. That's all that's left is 9H. So then guess what? Notice that this is all the numerator right here. So you're just basically taking step three and dividing by H. So when I get down here, this is going to be, this is going to be divided by H, and it's going to be whatever I got in step three, which was 9H. And so I'm going to, nope, 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 nope. The H is divided out, and I'm left with 9. So I'm going to box that. Really, really all of this is your answer. The whole thing is your answer, all the work, okay? So for me, I'm, if you take this, and I give you one of these because I'm going to give you one of these, all right? If you take my class, this will be on a college algebra test at some point. It will happen because it is so uber important for everything that follows for anybody going on to that next level, all right? So it will be on there, and I will be grading all of the work, not just, oh, did you get nine? Because you'll, you'll eventually see the pattern. Okay, and by the way, in calculus, this is the crux of it, but you learn shortcuts because there are patterns, and, and you, you see those and you use those. All right, so here, f of x plus h, this means 2 times x plus h squared plus 8 times x plus h minus 17. So this one, notice, is going to be a little bit more complicated because we have to square what we plugged in for x, which in this case is x plus h. It's two terms. That's... Write it down twice in four. That's what I'm going to do. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. So, look, rather than do a bunch of extra steps here, I'm going to take this in a thought cloud over here, okay? I'm going to take this over here and say, okay, in my thought cloud, I have x plus h squared, which is x plus h times x plus h, right? First, outer, inner, last. So x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared. There's two of those. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. All right. So I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to bring this back over here for this. Okay. So I you know, didn't save myself a ton, but that was three or four steps over there. So 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. You could also include the two. Like I could put the two here and then distribute the two here if I wanted to. I could do that in the thought cloud and save myself even one more step. But, I mean, it's, it's about six and one half dozen in the other. So, minus 17. So, there's just fill that in. Now, let's distribute the two and the eight. So, let's go ahead and distribute this. It's going to be 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. Then we distribute this, we get plus 8x plus 8h minus 17. So I have one, two, three, I have six terms. What are my like terms there? Well, let's see. This is like nothing. This is like nothing. This, nothing, right? This one's like nothing. This one, no, none of these things are alike, are they? So we have six terms, none of them are alike. Right, so you can see just with a squared, you, st you get it a cubed, it's going to be even bigger. Fourth power, even bigger. All right, so pack a lunch, have fun. You know, you'll miss Christmas. All right, so then here we get negative and then the function 2x squared plus 8x minus 17. Distribute to negative, and you get negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 17. And I already told you that. All step two ever is, is change all the signs of your function. When you put a minus sign out front, it means change all the signs. Okay? So step three, step three is to string together the blue and the gray here. Okay? So we have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 8x plus 8h minus 17. That's all the blue. I'm going to run out of breath here. Minus 2x squared minus 8x plus 17, all the gray. Whew, we got nine terms to simplify. I just told you if you have a polynomial like this, if it's not a 
radical or a rational a fraction, right? Then it, you better have only H's left. So 2X squared minus 2X squared. That cancels, doesn't it? 4XH, there's nothing else like it. 2H squared, nothing like it. 8X and negative 8X. So basically everything in gray, everything in the negative F of X is going to cancel out. It doesn't have H in it. And then minus 17 plus 17 also cancels. So I'm left with, I'm left with what? I'm left with 4XH plus 2H squared plus 8H. One, two, three terms, right? So I got rid of six terms, right? Had nine, got rid of six, got three left. So now this, all of this here goes over H, right? So this says, okay, let's put this over H. And that's going to be 4XH plus 2H squared plus 8H. And guess what every single term has in it? H. Every single term has an H. It also has a 2. If you took the 2 out, it's not wrong. Um, but I'm just going to take the H out. 4X plus 2H plus 8. All over H. And those H's divide out. And I'm left with 4X plus 2H plus 8. And I'm going to... And that's simplified. That is simplified. However... If you gave me the factor to answer 2 times 2x plus h plus 4, right? That's not simplified because there's parentheses there, but I'm going to take that, you know, because they're even and you factor the 2 out. Um, but in this use of things, um, we're supposed to simplify, so I'll leave it that way. But again, if you gave me that factored form, I would give you credit there, okay? All right, so that one got long real quick, right? Just when it went up to x squared, bam, it got long. Real quick, like. Ah, and here we have 3 over x plus 2. We have x in the denominator. This is where the and beyond part comes in because it's not just a straightforward uh, polynomial or whatnot. It's got your rational here with the x plus 2 in the denominator. So again, uh, I'm going to find the difference quotient. I'm going to start with f of x plus h. So this is going to be 3, and then I'm going to put in x plus h for x, and it's giving me my fits again, and then plus 2. All right? So, and I'm going to simplify it without the parentheses. It's going to be 3 over x plus h plus 2. All right? 3 over x plus h, and that's all step 1 is. So this time, step 1 wasn't complete chaos and craziness, but sometimes it will be. And so then negative f of x for the next one. So negative and then 3 over x plus 2, which again, the parentheses here are unnecessary, but so negative 3 over x plus 2. And then step 3 is to put those two things together, and this is where the magic's going to happen on this one. And by that, I just mean where the algebra is going to be intense for this problem. Okay, and we know, look, we know from seeing other ones that step one may be where the magic happens. Step two is typically not terrible because it's just distributing a negative typically, but, um, or putting a negative out there. And then step three could be a lot, step four could have a lot of stuff in it. So um, it just depends on the problem. So here, this one is where a lot of the uh, magic's going to happen. So we just bring down the blue and the, and, the, and the gray, right? Boom, there it is. And so, whoa, what do I do here? I need to find my LCD which one of my denominators is x plus h plus 2, and the other one is x plus 2. So, again, I like to write these down, and I'll say, okay, this is going to be x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. That's what my LCD is going to look like. I have a three-term factor and a two-term factor, two separate factors here. They don't have anything in common. I know they both have x and 2, but you can't say that, oh, two terms out of three terms are the same, so it's got something in common. No. If they're multiplied and they're factors, yes, but not when you have terms inside factors. Nope. Three terms and then two terms, not the same. Not the same. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this 3 over... Th Actually, I'm going to write it back in... Uh, I'm going to move it over. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to write it back in the blue. So we have... 3 over x plus h plus 2 times what it's missing, and then we have the gray minus 3 over x plus 2, and we're
And we're going to say what it's missing, times what it's missing here. And so what is this first one missing the blue? It's missing the x plus 2 over x plus 2, right? Or in the denominator, x plus 2, and then whatever you put in the bottom, you put in the top. And then over here, it's missing x plus h plus 2. So whatever I put down there, I put up here, right? So we have then, as I go to work this, I have x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. That's my denominator. And in the numerator, I have 3 times x plus 2. And then I have minus 3 times x plus h plus 2. And I know y'all are asking already, can I not do that in my head? You can. You won't miss the 3 times x plus 2 right here. You won't miss distributing this. But when you do this negative 3 times everything, what will happen is you'll put negative 3x, and you might put negative 3h, but you'll put plus 6. And, and you may not. Specifically, you may not. But, but, but when I say you, remember, I've been teaching for over two decades. I've seen it too many times. That's why I prefer you write this step down and do the lines that I just did for the distribution. Because we forget, and I even circled the negative 3. We like to forget that's negative when we distribute. First term, good. Second term, sometimes good. Third term, it's all, you know, the wheels have fallen off by the end a lot of times. So this is going to be 3x plus 6. Then we have minus 3x, right? Negative 3 times x. Negative 3 times h is negative 3h. And then minus 6. And this is still over my LCD. x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. And then... Some glorious happens. 3x minus 3h cancels, plus 6 minus 6 cancels, and we're left with negative 3h over my, I keep doing that, LCD. x plus h plus 2 and x plus 2. So that's the end of step 3, finally. Finally, and then step 4, I almost don't even know if I have enough room here. Step 4 is to put it all over h. What are we putting all over h? This whole thing over here, right? We got um, this fraction of everything over my LCD, x plus h plus 2. See if I can do that right this time. x plus 2, or the first time. And then over negative, or negative 3h over that. So how do I do a fraction divided by something? Well, I'm going to pretend like this is over 1. And then, right, keep the top fraction the same. So negative 3h over my LCD. And then times, flip this one, 1 over h, right? So multiply by the reciprocal. Then the h's divide out, and I'm left with what? Negative 3 over x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. Now I'm going to box that, but really, really, this whole thing is your work, okay? And you know, your teacher, your instructor, your professor, they may not break it up into four steps like this, okay? I'm simple. I like to break it up. I like to do step one, find f of x plus h, step two, negative f of x, then put them together in step three and simplify them, which in this case, right, that was pretty complicated because we had to do a common denominator. And then once we got that simplified, then we divided by h, which was then a fraction over something. We had to put that something over one, the h over one, then multiply by the reciprocal, and that, right, was again – Kind of intensive, but we arrived at the final answer down here, so negative 3 over the common denominator of x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. All right, so let's move on. All right, so the square root of x, the square root of x, the square root of x. So this says, okay, we're going to have the square root of x plus h. We're just going to plug that in. That's it. That's all that step is. And guess what the, the, all this next step is, is negative square root of x. Okay, well, those two are quick and simple. We're just rolling around along here. Equals, and then we're going to string the blue and the gray together, right? So square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. Don't put that minus under that, that radical there, right? Make sure that you don't do that, all right? Minus. So there it is, strung together. And you can't simplify it. You're done with that. So then, and so, you know, you get down here and you say, okay, this is going to be over h, and you get... The square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. All right? So h can't be 0, but I, I kind of let you in on a hint at the beginning of this that when you move on in math, you're going to pretend like h heads towards 0, so you can't have h in the denominator. So how would I try to get rid of h here? Well... We're going to rationalize the numerator. Say, what? You mean I'm going to 
get rid of the radicals in the top, the numerator, and put them in the bottom, the denominator? I've always been told you can't have radicals in the bottom because that's a lie. It's just an outright lie. You can have radicals anywhere. Numerator, denominator, top, bottom, on the left, on the right, upside down, doesn't matter. You can have them anywhere. They can be anywhere. And here is a use where you actually need to put them in the denominator for the mathematics to work out. Now, for this particular problem in algebra, if we don't know what the H is, you know, what's going to happen to it, but I want to show you this because this is very, very important with, with this. So we're going to take this and multiply by the conjugate, okay? In the numerator and denominator, we're going to have square root of x plus h plus the square root of x over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x, all right? So when we do that, we, we have FOIL first, outer, inner, last, right? So when we do that, x squared of x plus h times square root of x plus h is x plus h. Then we get plus the square root of x times the square root of x plus h, and we get minus the square root of x times the square root of x plus h, and guess what that does? Those things cancel. That's your outer and your inner on FOIL there. So I'm not going to write those. The reason we do conjugates is because the outer and the inner are always cancels and then minus a negative times a positive square root of x times square root of x is x all over h h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x and look what happens this and this cancels and you're left with h over h times the square root of x plus h oops not ready to close that yet, plus the square root of x. Those divide out and leave you the one, so I'm going to come up here and write my answer nice and neat here, up here. I didn't leave myself enough room. 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And I got rid of that h. That's really the goal of this, because I know what's next, because I've taught the next class, and the class after that, and the class after that. I know what's next. So you always want to eliminate that x, I mean that h in the denominator with the difference quotient. So the only way to eliminate it here is to rationalize the numerator. Put the square roots in the bottom. Holy cow. Holy flipping cow. That's what you do. You put them in the denominator. So I hope this helps you with the difference quotient. And again, I did the and beyond part. This part here on this problem where we get the radicals in the denominator, rationalize the numerator, that's and beyond. The one before we did the uh, common denominator and it was a lot of extra work there with that. That's the and beyond part, okay? So the first couple were pretty basic, pretty simple. The last two, not so much. But again, I wanted you to be exposed to it and see it because anybody that goes on beyond this class, you are going to use these. You use the thing on the board right now, the screen on the, on the screen right now. You use that about the third week of Business Cal 1 or, or regular Cal 1. And, it, and it's fundamental in, in being able to do certain types of problems. All right? So good luck.